Philip Marlowe is a talented private detective, one day a rich lady and an heiress of an oil company, who also happens to be the daughter of a famous actress, wants to hire him to find her secret lover, Nico Peterson. Peterson is a props director for a movie production house. Her name is Claire Cavendish, and she asks Marlowe to secretly conduct an investigation because she has lost track of her lover for quite some time. The last time she met Nico was at a club called Corbata. She has tried to find him and even looked for him at his house. But strangely, he was not there. But she found the milk service had not been cancelled and the newspapers piled up on the veranda of his house. These imply that Nico had mysteriously disappeared. Marlowe began his investigation by visiting Peterson's house, but there was no sign of life inside. A short while later, Peterson's neighbor showed up and said that he had not seen Peterson for the past seven weeks. He said that normally, there were always people who came to Peterson's house looking for him, either because of a debt or a husband, was looking for his wife as Peterson was known as a womanizer. He also added that, apart from Marlowe, a week ago, there were also two Mexicans who came looking for him. Based on this information, Marlowe then met his old friend, Joe Green, a police officer, to find as much information as possible about who Peterson really was. Joe said that Peterson was a cheater, a wife snatcher, and a man with many problems. He then told Marlowe that Peterson had actually been found dead after being hit and run by an unknown person in front of the Corbeta Club. The accident left Peterson's face damaged, making it difficult to recognize him. After receiving information from his friend, Marlowe moved on to the scene of the incident at the Corbeta Club. He sneaked in to look for any information he might be able to find, but the guards caught him. Afterward, Marlowe met Joe again. Joe told him an important piece of information that Peterson had been stabbed before the accident, and he thought that such a thing was suspicious. After getting the latest information from Joe, Marlowe headed to the Cavendish family mansion. When he arrived, he met someone in the front yard of the house. That man looked upset after having a big fight with Claire's mother. Claire explained that he was Joseph O'Reilly, her mother's financial advisor, who would soon become an ambassador to England. Before he could convey his intention to tell Claire that Peterson had been found dead, Mr. Cavendish unexpectedly arrived and suspected that Marlowe was his wife's latest fling. Marlowe told Mr. Cavendish that he was hired by his wife to find her missing jewelry. Claire disputed the news of Peterson's death because on the day Nico was found dead, she accidentally saw him in Tijuana when her mom asked her to see some horses there. According to the information she got, people believed that Peterson was a movie producer and that the antiques he was carrying were props for filming purposes. Marlowe felt that Claire was not being completely honest with him, so he refused to continue the investigation and walked away. On his way out of Claire's house, he met Claire's mother, Dorothy Quinn Cannon. It turned out that Dorothy had traced Marlowe's background. She was curious about what her daughter wanted, but Marlowe refused to reveal her client's confidential information. Marlowe was increasingly curious about the case he was handling, so he decided to go to Peterson's grave. Once there, he unexpectedly met a woman who was visiting Peterson's grave. Marlowe tried to chase her, but unfortunately, he lost her. Following his visit, Marlowe met Joe to ask if the police had found a suspect in the hit-and-run incident that killed Peterson. However, up until now, no one had been charged as the culprit. Joe was curious about Marlowe's client. He'd assumed that the client must be Peterson's younger sister. But Marlowe denied it and said he was working with someone who knew that Peterson had staged his death. Marlowe and Joe found irregularities in this case, including the victim's identification process carried out internally by Corbetta Club manager, Floyd Hansen, and the fact that Peterson's body was cremated in a hurry. The following day, thanks to Joe's help, Marlowe was able to meet Floyd Hansen and ask some questions regarding Peterson's death. While walking to Hansen's office, he accidentally saw the woman he saw yesterday at Peterson's grave. Marlowe told Hansen that he suspected that the person who died in the accident was not Peterson, but someone else who was intentionally killed for a reason. Hansen denied Marlowe's statement and said that it was Peterson's sister who had identified the dead man as Peterson. When Marlowe asked where Peterson's sister was, Hansen told Marlowe to ask the police instead. At the meeting, Marlowe made his way to the woman he had seen earlier. She claimed that she was Lynn Peterson, Nico Peterson's sister. However, seeing that Hansen kept watching her, and even told his men to kick her out of the club. Lynn asked Marlowe to meet her tonight at a massage parlor called Cabana. Later that evening, when Marlowe reached the place that Lynn referred to, he could not find her in her room. Instead, he had to deal with Hansen's men. The next day, 
Marlo was invited by Dorothy to meet her. Dorothy attempted to bribe Marlo into telling her about the results of his investigation regarding Nico Peterson. However, Marlo remained firm in his stance. He would not provide any information regarding his work with Claire. Dorothy then revealed a secret that the financial advisor who met Marlo the other day at her house, O'Reilly, was her lover. Dorothy hadn't told him that Claire was her daughter. He only knew that Claire was Dorothy's niece. Dorothy suspected that Claire was flirting with O'Reilly, for he had recently bought her a studio to support her career. And following her investigation, the payment for the studio came from Claire. She was worried that there was a conspiracy between O'Reilly and Claire to get rid of her. And she thought that all these incidents had something to do with Peterson's death. At the end of their conversation, Dorothy told Marlo some information she got from her private detective. The fact that Peterson had another lover named Amanda Toxteth, an extra that he could meet at the Pacific Picture Studio. Well, to make a long story short, Marlo met Amanda Toxteth at her workplace, which turned out to be Dorothy's studio. Amanda told him that Nico was a conquering type of man, but did not want an intimate relationship. Marlo had asked Amanda for some information about the business dealings between Nico Peterson and some Mexicans. Amanda told him that there was one business that was doing well in Mexico, which was none other than drugs. After getting information from Amanda, Marlo revisited Nico Peterson's house. He barged into the house to look for clues that might be found. When Marlo wanted to read a note he found on the table, Lynn, who also happened to be in the house, spotted him. Lynn asked Marlo the purpose of his coming and why he barged into her brother's house. Marlo claimed that he was Nico's friend who was hired by someone to investigate his disappearance. Marlo assured Lynn that her brother was not dead, but that he had fabricated his death. A short while later, two Mexicans entered the house and asked Lynn about a woman named Serena. Lynn tried to run away from the house, and one of them went after her, while the other man was taken down by Marlo. The one who was chasing Lynn managed to catch her, and at the same time, Marlo arrived and pointed his gun at him. He asked him who Serena was. Marlo then shot him in the leg and again asked where and who Serena was. But suddenly, someone hit Marlo from behind. When he woke up, a man named Cedric pointed his gun at Marlo. Cedric then took him to meet his boss, Lou Hendricks, who was waiting for him inside Nico's house. Hendrick then offered to take Marlo back to his house. Throughout their drive, Hendricks told Marlo that Peterson had worked with him as a Mexican tarantula supplier. Hendrick offered to pay Marlo. He wanted Marlo to tell him if one day he managed to find Nico, as there was still unfinished business between them. However, Marlo refused to work with him. When they arrived at Marlo's address, it turned out that the address was not Marlo's house but Joe's office. Marlo wanted to report Lynn's kidnapping and tell Joe that his gun had been stolen by two Mexicans. Joe then gave him a new one of the same type as an alibi in case someone ever used the stolen gun. That evening, a detective named Bernie Oles, who was sent by Joe, came to Marlowe to follow up on the report of Lynn's disappearance. A short while later, Claire also arrived at Marlowe's house to ask about the progress of Peterson's investigation. Claire then shared a story about her past. For six years, she lived with nuns so that her mother could be with O'Reilly. Claire then said goodbye to Marlowe because she had an appointment with someone somewhere. Secretly, Marlowe followed Claire's car, which was heading to O'Reilly's house. While he was watching Claire, he was suddenly surprised by Dorothy's arrival. She came to prove her suspicions about her daughter's affair with O'Reilly. The next morning, Marlo and Detective Bernie headed to a river after being informed of the discovery of Lynn's body. Lynn had been found dead. Afterward, they went to the Corbeta Club and found the car of two Mexicans and Lou Hendricks' car parked in the club's parking lot, and they suspected that these people were involved in Lynn's death. Detective Bernie then asked Marlo to take over his investigation as it was illegal for him to do so without a warrant. Later that night, Marlowe sneaked into the Corbeta Club, and then he sneaked into Hansen's room and caught him while he was smoking drugs. Got an application. What if I told you that the police won't touch you? Marlowe asked him what the relationship was between him, the Mexican, and Lou Hendricks. Why are their cars all parked in Corbata's yard? And is the ambassador to England or Dorothy their boss? Floyd then invited Marlowe to discuss all his questions over a drink. Secretly, Floyd mixed something into the drink. He then began his story by telling him about his illegal business, selling drugs at the club. He then took Marlo downstairs to meet Hendricks. Marlo, who apparently already knew that there was something mixed in his drink, dumped the drink and pretended to faint after drinking it. It was at that moment that Floyd revealed the truth. Lou Hendricks and the Mexicans were his business partners who had been working with Peterson. 
they had cheated on him by hiding some of his drugs. Floyd also admitted that he had killed Lynn because the poor woman had not followed his rules. For him, Peterson's disappearance was not a big deal. Marlowe was then taken to a room where Lou Hendrick was being held captive. In that room, Marlowe also found two Mexicans who had died after being tortured. He was put in a room with Cedric, Hendrick's driver. Once they left him, Marlowe released Cedric and invited him to work together. Meanwhile, in another room, Floyd confronted Lou Hendricks to interrogate him about Serena, the woman who was last seen with Peterson and hid the drugs. Lou revealed that the Serena he was looking for was not a woman, but an ornate statue in an aquarium. Marlowe and Cedric managed to find a gun in the warehouse, so they rushed out and shot Floyd. During the shootout, Cedric accidentally shot the aquarium, shattering the glass and dropping the Serena statue, which contained the drugs, causing all the drugs stored in it to be washed away by the water. Hendrix scolded Cedric for not trying to save the rest of the drugs, and in response, Cedric shot his boss dead. After the whole mess was over, Marlowe and Cedric reported the incident to Detective Bernie. Upon returning to his home, Marlowe was surprised by Peterson's arrival. He appreciated him as a great detective, who was able to dismantle the fabrication of his death. Marlowe told him about the death of her sister Lynn. Strangely, Peterson wasn't saddened by the information because Lynn was only his stepsister. Peterson's purpose in coming to see Marlowe was to ask him to deliver his message to Claire. He asked Claire to meet him tonight at the Pacific Studios prop warehouse because he had an item that Ambassador O'Reilly wanted. Marlowe then asked him about his relationship with Dorothy, given that she also asked him to find Nico. Nico then said that he didn't know anything about Dorothy's motives. Maybe she was just worried that her daughter would take her lover. Marlowe held a meeting with Claire and Dorothy to shed light on all the problems that were happening. Marlowe lured Claire by telling her that Peterson had run off with a girl named Serena and brought drugs with him. However, Claire's expression did not hint at her jealousy toward Peterson. On the other hand, Dorothy didn't seem very interested in the matter. At this point, Claire revealed a secret. She said that Dorothy had actually been dumped by O'Reilly, and he was using her to seduce the ambassador. With great resentment, Claire walked away. Marlowe rushed after her and came over to her. Claire said that she would be sending payment for Marlowe's services soon. Marlowe then told her that Peterson had come to see him and asked her to come to Pacific Studios' prop warehouse later this evening. Later that evening, Marlowe was driven by Cedric to the Pacific Studios' prop warehouse. Along the way, Cedric told Marlowe everything he knew during his time working with Lou Hendricks. He learned that the warehouse Peterson was referring to was where Peterson worked as a film props director and where he smuggled drugs and antique props from Mexico to England. Peterson had been working with Floyd, Lou Hendricks, and Ambassador O'Reilly. It was likely that Peterson secretly had other plans. He was collecting records on the drug deals he had been running to blackmail Ambassador O'Reilly. As Claire arrived at the warehouse, Peterson showed her a briefcase containing drug transaction records. They will use those transaction records to blackmail Ambassador O'Reilly and plan to run as far away as possible afterward. While Claire was checking the suitcase around the same time, Marlowe arrived at the warehouse. Peterson, who learned of Marlowe's arrival, started shooting at him. Marlowe was eventually able to avoid Peterson's shots, but unexpectedly, Claire shot Peterson instead. She then set fire to the warehouse and all the files of drug transactions, along with Peterson's body. At that moment, Marlowe let Claire go, then he called the fire brigade and met Detective Bernie. To Detective Bernie, Marlowe gave false information about the incident that had occurred. The following day, Marlowe was accompanied by Cedric to attend Claire's invitation, who apparently now had an important position at the office of Ambassador O'Reilly. Claire then told him that her mother was back in the movie with full financial support from her and the Ambassador O'Reilly. She also said that the Ambassador appreciated Marlowe's thoughtfulness and offered him a position as head of security with a large salary as well as a retirement fund. Marlowe was grateful for the offer but he refused to accept it. He recommended that Cedric take over the position offered to him. 